in my previous video, I've talked about strings in C Sharp, so you guys can check that out. Link is in the description. Aside from text, numbers are also very important when it comes to software development. We'll be mostly using numbers to count stuff, and you can immediately see in YouTube, for instance, there's the uh, like count, dislike count, view count, and the subscribers count, which uses numbers. Another thing you might do is to calculate some statistics if you're planning on doing some charts or reports and stuff like that. Or if you're planning to go to game development, you're gonna need to play a lot with vectors, positions, distances, score counts, and so on. In my second video, there's a brief introduction to data types and I've introduced to you guys some number data types like integer, float, double and decimal. Link for that video is also in the description. In this video, we'll be focusing on numbers and do some cool things with math. We will also create our favorite high school math equation, which is the quadratic equation. So basically, there's two types of number. The first one is whole number and the second one is decimal number. As we've seen before, we can use integer for whole number, like this. Int count is equal to zero. And float, like this, or double, like this, and also decimal. So these are just some examples. So we'll start with some basic math operations. So let's do two numbers here. I t count two equals to ten, and let's change this to five, and let's make a console dot right line count plus count two. We can add two numbers just like how we concatenate a string. What this does is it will add count variable, which is 5, plus count 2, which is 10. It should get 15. So we get 15 here. So this is how, in most cases, we're going to do in our software projects. But we can also add like this, 3 plus 7. So just static numbers here. So you get back 10. And another thing you can do is you can add a variable count plus a static number like this. So 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. Alright, so if we want to subtract two numbers, we can just write like this. Count 2 minus count. So it's 10 minus 5, and we get 5 back. And the same principle we can use for the uh, subtraction here also, like 7 minus 4, we get back 3. And we can also do the same, 7 minus count, we get back 2. So another thing to keep in mind is that integer can have negative numbers. So if we do count minus 7, we get back negative 2. Another cool thing we can do with addition and subtraction of integers is by using the uh, double plus or double minus count. So if we add count plus plus and we just output the count here, we should get 6. What it does is it adds the count by 1. It is the same as if we write something like this, count equals to count plus 1. So this will return 6 as well. Or we can do count minus minus, which we get 4 back. This is also the same as we do count equals to count minus 1. So a new value of count is after count minus 1, which is 4. So we're going to look at other operations. Let's say I have integer of factor equals to 3. And when I write count asterisk factor, 
This means count times factor or count multiply by factor, which means 5 times 3. And we get back 15. And for division, we're going to use slash. So let's change this to 9, make it a whole number. So 9 divided by 3 should have 3. Another operation we can do is the um, modulus operator. So we use the percent sign here. And what it does is it gets the remainder of a division. So like this, 9 divided by 3, there's no remainder, which will get 0. So if I use count 2 here, which is 10, 10 divided by 3 is 3, which with a remainder of 1. So we should get 1 back. So for the order of operation here, it follows the exact same principle as regular math. Let's say I want to do something like 7 plus 9 times 3. So in math, we're going to do the multiplication first and then the addition, which will get the same result here. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 7, we get 34. And if we want to change the order of operation, we just have to include parentheses for those that we want to execute first. So this will execute 7 plus 9 first, which will get 16, times 3, which will get 48. So if you, even if you use variable, so even if you use variable, it's going to be the same. Let's say I have count here and then factor here. And I'm going to mix with a, stat a static number. We're going to return the same result. So we'll have a more clear understanding on how the order of operation works once we do the um, quadratic equation. So we're going to look at the decimal number. Let's say if I have a float of count 2, let's say 10.1, and this will be double factor 2.5. So if we add a whole number with a whole number, we're going to get a whole number back, like previously what we did. But if I add a whole number with a decimal number, we should get back a decimal number. So we're going to get 19.1. And it is the same if we have an operation of decimal number with another decimal number. So there you are. 10.1 times 2.5. We get this number. So now we're going to see the system.math class. This math class have a lot of built-in functions that we can use for mathematical equations. For example, I can do power. So math.pow, math.pow, let's say I change this to 2, and I do a math.pow, parentheses, open and closing. I put in the first number, and then the second number is the power. So what it does is it it will do 9 to the power of 2. So we get 81 here. And you can also do it with decimal number like this. So it will do 9 to the power of 2.5. 243. And we can also do a square root. So let's say the square root of 9. 
and this will get 3. So you just have to put in math.sqrt, the open and closing parentheses, and then the number inside here. And it will output as a double. So you want to keep in this in variables. You can do something like this. So let's say we change this to sqrt9. This is just a name. So this will return a double assigned to this variable and we output here which will output the same result and we get 3 here also when you try to just write math and then dot we're gonna see all the uh, available functions here you see there's a square root, sine, scale, round, bow, pi min max a lot more you can use and we're gonna use some of these in the uh, quadratic equation later on there's actually a lot more math function that we can use and you can see it in the uh, doc Microsoft documentation for C sharp that there, there's a math class here and we can see under methods you can see there's a lot of other functions. ABS, absolute value, even the uh, cost, sign, tangent, ceiling, a lot more you can use. I'll provide the documentation link under the description below. Okay, now let's do the quadratic equation. We're going to do a very simple quadratic equation. So as you can see in this page here, mathisfun.com uh, we can use this formula and do it in our program so you see we have x equals to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac of this divided by 2a and the value of abc comes from the equation itself so ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0 so let's not focus on the equation itself. Let's just bring in the formula here. And if we input A, B, and C, we're going to get two x's. So if you use plus, it's for the first x, and minus is for the second x. We're going to do a very basic quadratic formula here. So let's start. So we're going to use double for the x1 and x2. So we have A, B, C, let's say all are double, double A, double B, and double C. Alright, so once we have all A, B, and C, we're going to build those function here. So X1 is equals to minus B plus math dot square root of b square which is also math dot pow b comma two this will do b square minus four times a times c and all of these should be inside a parentheses so this will be a separate function as this also and as you can see all these will divided by 2a so all of the um, the top one will be included in the parentheses and divided by 2 times a and for safe root let's just do this inside a parentheses as well so we have the first x one and we copy this we're gonna get x2 should be minus b minus math dot square root so we have all this okay now we have our quadratic equation here with a plus and minus sign so let's initialize the value of abc Probably we're going to use um, 
this one. 5 for A, 6 for B, 1 for C. 5, 6, and 1. So we're going to use string interpolation for the output. We're going to say x1 is equals to curly braces x1. x2 is equals to curly braces x2. And as you know from my previous string tutorial, this will be resolved at runtime. So it will be the answer for both x. Let's try and run it. We should get the correct answer. So we have x1 is equal to minus 0 0.2. x2 is equal to minus 1. So if we go here, yes, it's correct. x equals to minus 0 0.2. x equals to minus 1. Let's try another one. x squared plus 3x minus 4 which means a is equals to 1, b is equals to 3, c is equals to minus 4. So 1, 3, minus 4. And we run this. So we'll get x1 is equals to 1, x2 is equals to minus 4, which is correct right here. All right. As you can see here, our program is it's working, but it's not really good because we don't have a user input to change the variable of A, B, and C. We have to type in the code itself, which is not what a program should do. So in the next video, we're going to look at user input and we will improve our quadratic equation into a more flexible equation so we can we're gonna have a user we're gonna have the user to be able to input a b and c so that's it for this video thanks for watching